Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. In the video for this bowl, I was extremely disappointed when I blew through the bottom of the bowl. So I appealed to y'all for ideas on what to do with this pretty bowl, but with a hole in the bottom. A lot of great ideas, and I thank you for them. Some of them had me repurposing it as a lampshade, maybe even a coolie hat, I don't know. Others said bird bath. Others said, okay, since it is a funnel, make it a funnel. But most of them had to do with putting something in the middle. And from wood to epoxy to resin. And then embedding coins or different colors. All great ideas. Some then said, put it on a pedestal and raise it up. Others said, Put a handle below it and raise the handle up. Anyway, a lot of great ideas. I can't do justice to them all. But here's a couple. One was to just turn a bit of a cone and put it on it. And then it can shift as, as the mood strikes you. And then that turns it more into a work of art and you can charge even more for it. Or throw it up through, give it a bit of a handle, and now maybe it's a candy dish or nut dish. Another great idea. Another one that I particularly like is to take the plug or the medallion. In this case, it is a small plug and I'll have to show you the detail on it. But what I did was to use the infinite access chuck that we developed a bit ago to turn various features on this plug so that it's not just a plain plug. It is now a deliberate insert to the bottom of the, of the bowl. So I had to adapt it a little bit for that, but that's fine. So in this video, I'll show you this that with the infinite access chuck and an adaptation to it to make that chuck even better. And I'll, if you need to, I'll show you the little cone and the handle. So let's get to work. To begin, I have a small disc of paduk that is just big enough for this application, but none to spare. I'm using double stick tape to mount it to a threaded wood faceplate. I need to either keep pressure on for a few minutes before turning, or turn with the tailstock in place. I choose both. Then cut a tenon to fit the hole in the bottom of the bowl. While fitting, I vacillated between a single plug and a double plug to cover the hole from both sides. In the end, I settled on a single plug to be inserted from the top. I need to sand a little now. I'm not removing the wood from the faceplate yet. I'll use the faceplate to center the wood when I transfer it over. Now to transfer the wood to the infinite access chuck. First I mount the chuck and center it with the tailstock, then apply double stick tape and press the wood into a cone center on the tailstock against the faceplate. This keeps the wood centered while transferring it. The paduk is too thick. I'll take this opportunity and thin it down with a parting tool rather than detach the tape from the faceplate. Then shape the surface and sand up through all the grits. Who knows when I'll have another chance to sand on the lathe. Now for the first feature. I'm loosening the chuck, then using the live center to indicate the center of the feature I want to turn. Then carefully cut the feature with a sharp spindle gouge. I need to sand it now. There it is. Kind of a double moon effect. Now to shift to the next feature. Loosen the chuck, then cinch it just enough to hold it while I position it for the next cut. Again, the live center points to the center. Then cinch up the chuck as tight as possible. This time I want a little cone surrounded by a hollow. Easy does it. I have to stop to be sure where I'm cutting. 
Please note that the axis of the cone is not perpendicular to the base. One more feature for this small disc. Same routine. Loosen, position, tighten, cut, sand. This one is a hollow with a ridge on the bottom. Again, sand, but not much sanding for any of these small features. Finally, I can brush on some lacquer and wipe off the excess before prying the disc from the chuck. That will do. It will be glued into the bottom of the bowl. With the last revision to the infinite axis chuck, I added a 3 8 inch bolt to enable more turning options and then a replaceable mount for the wood to be turned. I used maple for the mount thinking that maple would retain the threads, but the maple did not retain threads well enough for this usage. So I purchased a 3 8 inch T-nut that I will embed in, my, in any wood. So I found a piece of walnut big enough to fit my scroll chuck. I'm rough rounding and cutting a tenon on one end. A threaded insert would be another option. Now I'm flipping it around onto the dovetail tenon to round off the other side. Rough round and part off leaving a thickness of at least the depth of the T-nut. Then prepare to drill a shallow one inch hole the size of my T-nut's diameter and a through one half inch hole the size of the T-nut shaft. I also cut a little tenon just in case I need to remount. Before I go too far I'm truing the face of the off cut so it can be glued back to the portion of with the nut. Since the one half inch hole for the T-nut is slightly large for the barrel I don't want to just pound in the T-nut for fear of it shifting off center. Instead I'm changing the live center for a cone center and using the tailstock to press the T-nut gently into place. Then remove the T-nut and drill for the prongs. I don't want to risk them splitting the wood. Then press the T-nut firmly into place with the cone center. Then glue the two portions back together again. After the glue is set, I'm trimming back excess wood from the attachment side of the wood and trimming the outer perimeter. This is somewhat rough, but I don't need it to be pretty, even if it is walnut. I now have no fear for the threads. But if they do fail, I'll just make another. Perhaps I should make another now for an additional mount. For the cone stand, I previously rough turned a piece of wet Titan cedar and left it to dry. Now is its time to serve. I placed it in my chuck and start turning a cone. This is a great time to use a skew for a smooth surface it leaves. Then sand and spray it with blue alcohol based dye with a Richeson atomizer available at art stores or Amazon. The blue seemed very dark, so I sanded it again with fine sandpaper. Since this is a uniform color, I decided to apply brush-on lacquer to see how it works. As I was wiping off the excess, I picked up a lot of color. This was fine in this case since I wanted to lighten the blue, but otherwise I should use spray lacquer. For the handle alternative, I'm using the same Titan Cedar spindle. I'm first focusing on turning down most of the cylinder to fit the hole in the bowl. I actually only need a little bit this size near the base, but I'm working it gradually so I don't overcut to be too small. As I'm close to the diameter, I'm sanding the remainder to fit to avoid sanding it later and making it too small and loose. Once it fits, I'm forming a simple handle shape on the spindle with a skew and small spindle gouge. After sanding, I'm masking off the base that will be 
below the bowl. I don't want this to be blue. Then spraying with the same blue dye. This time I'm using rattle can lacquer to finish the spindle to avoid picking up the dye. Then refine the base and part it off. I'll sand the bottom at the drill press. Well, here are three examples on how to save that bowl and make it look deliberate. Only a fellow woodturner would know that this was not my plan all along. Circumstances have prompted a different route and new discoveries. The cone provides an artistic alternative. The handle makes the bowl utilitarian. The decorated plug or insert adds more visual interest on the artistic side. Thank you all for the wide range of suggestions. Over time, I may try them all as I blow through the bottoms of more turnings. It will happen. We'll see you again next week for another wood turning video. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and please tell your friends. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough protection. Until next week, this is Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. Let's keep turning.